All right, everybody. Hello. I want to thank you for being on the call. What the Worth account does, and this is what we're going to be talking about tonight, is uh, it is a program that will help you rapidly pay off all of your debt in as little as five to seven years without any change to your lifestyle, without refinancing any of your current debts, and without having to consolidate anything. All right. I've personally been a user of the program for going on, I guess, uh, 13 years now. Um, and it has been incredible. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and get into a little bit of detail uh, as we go through. So in 1997, so that's when we first started, Skylar Whitman and John Wyshenko started a mortgage company. And it was one of Utah's fastest growing mortgage companies uh, in the three-year period. They were actually childhood friends and had known each other for many, many years and decided to start this mortgage company. And what they found was that they were getting people into mortgages and then the people were coming back a couple of years later and they were in deeper debt and they were you know, having to refinance and they were having to consolidate their, uh, their credit cards and wrap that into their mortgage or their the motorcycle that they just bought. And they saw that people were constantly just getting into to this endless cycle of getting in deeper and deeper. When John and Skylar were younger, both of their families actually experienced having a home foreclosed on. And so they really understood how much burden debt can be and what a strain it can be in a family, in marriages, um, you know, and just growing up as kids. And so they have a passion to help people get out of debt. And they said, look, as a mortgage company, it's great if people are coming back and refinancing every couple of years. But if we're really trying to help our clients, you know, we need to figure out a way to help them to, to start getting out of this debt and not getting in deeper and deeper. So in 2002, they focused on finding a cure for clients. And what they did was they hired a, a whole bunch of experts, uh, mathematicians, engineers, IT specialists, uh, in order to start to create a software program that would help people rapidly pay off mortgages. Now, at the time, it was solely just mortgages. That's not the case now. Uh, we actually are able to work with all forms of debt. Um, but back in 2002, initially started with just mortgages. Now, the concept isn't necessarily new, and in 2002, they started to do a lot of research, and what they found was that overseas, uh, there were several programs that were helping people get out of debt. In Australia, there was actually a program that um, was helping people get out rapidly, and what they were finding was that over there, about a, the, the average homeowner pays about $100,000 to $150,000 less in interest than what we pay in the United States. They also found that in England, Richard Branson, many of you may know that name, Virgin Atlantic, Virgin Records, Virgin Airlines, pretty much Virgin everything <laughs> is Richard Branson. Uh, he had partnered with the Bank of Scotland and was marketing something called the One Loan. And at one time, 25% of all homeowners in the UK were using that program and it was helping homeowners to, to get out of debt quickly. Now, both of those companies tried to bring things to the United States and it just didn't work, and, and it was for a number of reasons. Um, you know, one, they didn't have the technology. Um, two, what they were actually doing was refinancing, and it was actually a mortgage product that they were offering. Many states didn't approve it. You had to qualify. It was a variable interest rate. There were closing costs. It was just a number of things that made it not necessarily compatible with the way that things work here in the states. Obviously, um, financial laws and, and products are different overseas, so never really got any traction. Skylar and John said, look, why don't we use the, some of the financial principles that they're using that makes things successful, add some others, and create something that is not a mortgage product. Let's try and figure out how to leverage that knowledge with what we're really trying to create here um, with the software. And so that's what they did. In 2004, they launched the first version of the Worth account, and it was won a ton of awards. Um, and they were initially just offering it to their mortgage clients to start. Uh, remember, they, they still owned the mortgage company at this time. So they were initially just offering it to them, and they found that it was so well-received and it was working so well that they, re they said, you know, why don't we go ahead and see if there is a, um, a larger market for this. And so what they did was they went ahead and did something called the, the Denver 400 beta test. And why in Denver if they were in Utah? Well, if you're going to run a test market, you don't do it in your backyard in case you mess it up. So, so they went to Denver and uh, put 400 homeowners on the product. And what they found was that at the end of the year, tw um, the majority of clients there were 20% ahead of, of their payoff schedule. So if they said they were going to pay it off in 10 years, you know, they were at eight years. And so, and the homeowners were, were loving the product, referring friends, and they realized that they had something um, that was much bigger at this point. 
So what they decided to do in 2006 was they launched a company called United First Financial or U First Financial. And that's when I first heard about this program. I was in financial services before and saw this and, and just immediately recognized the value of this for people. Over the next few years, we helped tens of thousands of people pay off their mortgages in a third to a half the normal time. Every 12 minutes, somebody was actually getting onto the software. Now, at the time, we actually did need the software combined with a home equity line of credit, and that provided a couple of, of limitations. Um, we'd weren't, we were not refinancing the mortgage. The mortgage was staying where it was. Car loans were staying where they were, but we did need a home equity line of credit as a vehicle, okay? And we'll come back to why that's important in a bit. We were featured in many different industry magazines um, and got a lot of accolades there and even won something called the Ernst & Young Entrepreneur of the Year Award. Uh, and you may say, okay, well, you know, that's nice, but Ernst & Young doesn't just look at a product and say, you know, hey, that's a nice idea, let's give them an award. What Ernst & Young does is very intensive due diligence. They look at the financials of a company, the longevity, um, the, the longevity potential. They look at the customer retention, product itself. They look at the viability in the marketplace to see if there's a product market fit. Uh, and they looked at the impact on consumers, okay? Um, so it's very, uh, an honor to receive that. These are on the screen here, are some of the other companies that have, have received the Ernst & Young Entrepreneur Year of the Year Award before. Um, so we're very honored to have had that. However, life happens. And in 2009, if you guys remember the uh, global financial meltdown where we had, you know, Lehman Brothers and um, the banking crisis and AIG and, and everything um, within our financial world was really changed. Um, they actually said that it was the next greatest financial catastrophe to the Great Depression. And so at that time, it made it very difficult because the lending industry pretty much completely came to a screeching halt and we were not able to get clients um, to get a line of credit. And those that had lines of credit, some of them even were getting frozen. So what happened at that point was that it was very difficult to continue to, to market this for, for a little while. But they never stopped servicing the existing clients and they went back to the drawing board to try and figure out how do we eliminate the reliance on a home equity line of credit? How can we try to make sure that people can still get out of debt and not have that requirement? Because again, this is something that to them is a life passion for them. And so John and Skyler went back to the drawing board and now we do not need a home equity line of credit. And that's huge because now we can help people with bad credit, no equity, not even a homeowner. Okay, so if you're on this call and you just have student loans or a car loan, um, this program will work for you as well, all right, and still works for homeowners as well. It really opened the whole market for us. So we went ahead then and launched the company again as Worth Unlimited, and currently there, there's been nearly $20 million spent on the software. Over 70,000 clients across the United States are using it, and we've had nearly $2 billion of debt paid down. Um, so this is not a concept that we're going to talk about tonight. This is proven. Uh, it's been around for 15 years, all right, and, uh, and it's been massively successful. All right, so let's get into to how this works. So first, before we actually get into our product, I want to make sure that, that first we understand a little bit about how banks work and how banks make money. And I also want to make sure that we understand uh, interest and, and loans in general. So we're going to start off a little bit basic. If you ever notice when you go to a, a, a city or a town, the largest uh, building in that area will have a bank's name on it. Why? Well, banks have know how to build their empire. And one of the strategies that they use is that they've learned that to pay interest to make interest. And we're gonna talk about what that means. Banks have multiple ways of collecting capital. Some of the main ways allows them to pay less than 3%, sometimes all the way down to 0% interest on the money that they control. But on the flip side, banks tend to earn interest through multiple vehicles and they can earn interest at a rate greater than 6%, sometimes all the way up to 20%. Now let's look at where they get that capital. So where are they able to, to borrow money for less than 3%? Well, unfortunately it's from you and, and me, me as well. Yeah, they get it from checking, savings, and CDs, right? We're not making more than 3% on those accounts. And so the bank is leveraging your money. You have money sitting there today, and the bank's using it. And then when it comes to earning uh, more than 6%, that's unfortunately on you too. Um, you have loans, credit cards, mortgages, 
and the bank leverages that as well. The difference between what we earn and what we pay in interest is known as arbitrage. And what we can see here is that arbitrage can work for you or against you. Currently, in this scenario, in most people's lives, it's working against you. And what we wanna do is how to teach you how to make that work in your favor. So let's talk about a mortgage, just so that everybody's on the same page. We have a $200,000 uh, mortgage in this case, and we're gonna use this throughout the entire night. We have a 6% interest rate, which makes the mortgage payment $1,199.10. The very first mortgage payment that is made, very first month, only $199 of that payment goes to principal, and $1,000 goes to interest. That's pretty depressing. What's more depressing is the second month, because only a dollar more goes to principal and a dollar less to interest. The vast majority of your payments are front loaded in interest. So at the end of year one, you've paid over $14,000 and only $2,500 of it has gone to principal or is equity. If you look at year five, it gets worse. And, and at year five, you've paid $72,000, 14 of which has gone to equity, which means that about 81% of all the payments you've made have gone towards interest. It actually takes 21 years for you to pay half of that $200,000 mortgage off. All right, and at that point, if you look at the amount paid, we've paid $300,000, have 100,000 of equity. And total for this loan, you have to pay $431,000, which is 231,000 in interest. So you're gonna pay more in interest than you are for the actual house, which is incredible. So how can we pay the debt off early? Well, conventional methods will tell you that you can refinance to a lower interest rate and maybe take the, the additional principal payments and apply them. Problem is that most people don't ever do that. They'll refinance, get a lower payment, and spend the money. Um, you could send some additional money in each month, but that would be a change to your lifestyle, okay? And we don't wanna do that. Uh, you also could do a bi-weekly payment. And for those of you that don't know, a bi-weekly will generally take a 30-year mortgage and pay it off in 23 years. So it will save you seven years. We are trying, we're not trying, we are flipping the script completely and looking to pay mortgages off in seven years and save 23, completely different. So with the Worth account, there's no refinancing, no change to your standard of living. It is not a bi-weekly program or a debt roll down or a reverse mortgage or any of those things. And it's also not concept or theory, it is proven, all right? The Worth account is gonna guide you to make the money that you already have and the money that you're gonna continue to earn work the hardest for you every single day of the year. It's gonna take your money and have it either earn interest or cancel interest, but it's not gonna be sitting stagnant anymore making the bank rich at your expense. Now, there's four required components in order to make the program work. The first one is debt. Now, as I said before, it doesn't really matter if you have a mortgage, student loans, car payment, credit card debt, whatever it may be, any sort of debt or a combination of all of those, um, any of that will work. Additionally, we need to have a checking and a savings account. Now those are not with our company, it's a checking and savings account that are at any major banking institution or minor banking institution. Wherever your checking account and savings account are now, it is going to stay there. The fourth uh, component that we need is the Worth Account software and coaching, and that is what we have developed, and we're gonna talk in a lot more detail. Now there's a fourth optional component, uh, which is called an advanced line of credit. An advanced line of credit can be a home equity line of credit, a personal line, a business line, um, even a credit card in some cases with a limit as little as two hundred thousand. Or I'm sorry, with a limit as little as three hundred dollars. Um, having an advanced line of credit will generally take about an extra six months to a year off of your payoff time, but it is absolutely not required. All right. And I'm not going to actually show that. Now, I do want to mention um, for you, though, it's not every home equity line or personal line of credit will work. It needs to be very specifically set up. Uh, whoever invited you onto this call can, can tell you more about that. But essentially, we're looking for what's called an open-ended loan, uh, where the bank will apply money to that type of loan when it's received, and they'll adjust the principal balance multiple times per month. And that's really important. Generally, that ends up being a interest-only variable rate loan with no prepayment penalties and no fees to take draws. And uh, again, we can get into that more specifically at a later date. All right, so those are the four required components, debt, checking, savings, worth account. Then we have four money saving principles, and this is what I wanna teach you about tonight. There's different ways that we leverage 
and, and turn things to work in our favor. The first one is interest accumulation. Second is interest float, interest cancellation, and strategic payoff. And we're going to talk about each one of those as we go through some examples, and I'll point them out to you. So John and Rebecca Jones is the couple that we're going to use. Now, they make $5,000 of, of income, and that's after taxes. They have $4,800 of expenses. That includes everything, uh, mortgage, you know, gas, uh, electric bill, groceries, clothing for the kids, everything. After they pay all of their expenses, they only have $200 a month of discretionary income. If we look at their debt, they have the exact same mortgage that we just talked about, $200,000 loan, 6%, $1,199 a month, and it's a 30-year mortgage, 360 months. They also have a credit card uh, with no balance and 12% interest rate. Now, you do not need to have a credit card to make this program work. It's just I'm using it simply to, um, to show you one of the four financial principles, and we'll get into to more detail. So here's what's going to happen. We have a $200,000 mortgage, and on the very first day of the month, John and Rebecca get their paychecks direct deposited into their checking account. All right, that money gets deposited, it's $5,000. Once that $5,000 hits their checking account, the Worth Account software program is going to say, hey, let's immediately move that $5,000 from your checking account into your savings account. Let's start earning interest. So you move that $5,000 from checking over to savings. Then it's gonna say, hey, charge as many of your expenses as you can, onto your credit card. Uh, in a lot of cases, you can charge your car payment, your mortgage payment, a whole lot of different expenses. So in this case, they're gonna charge as much as they can onto that credit card. And then just to make it easier for illustration purposes, it's gonna end up being their entire $4,800 of expenses, okay? Now again, you do not have to have a credit card, but I'm just showing you one of the principles, all right? And I'll get to that in a minute. Now, you'll notice a couple different things have happened at this point. First of all, we've charged our $4,800 of expenses on the credit card. You can see, though, that the mortgage has gone from $200,000 down to $199,801. Why? Well, part of that $4,800 of expenses was our mortgage. And if you remember, when you make your first mortgage payment, $199 of it goes to principal, and the majority goes to interest. So that's why that principal balance has gone down a little bit. You'll also see that the $5,000 has gone to $5,012. And why has that happened? Well, we've earned $12 of interest because our savings account is earning at 3% rate. Now, it could be any rate. It doesn't really matter. Um, but for illustration, we're using 3%. So that is the first money-saving principle is interest accumulation. All right? Rather than having money sit stagnant in a checking account where the bank leverages it, we want to put it into, in this case, a savings account where we can earn interest on it and start interest accumulation. Now, the software after that is going to say, okay, go ahead. It's beginning of month two now. Go ahead and deposit your $5,000 paycheck because we're into the second month. So it automatically gets direct deposited, that $5,000. All right, take a sip of water. The software is then going to say, all right, we need to make sure that we pay down that credit card. And probably everybody on here um, probably has experience with this. If you charge items on a credit card and you pay it off at the end of the month before the grace period is ended, how much interest do you pay on the charges? Zero, right? And that's exactly what happens here. And that's the second principle, which is interest float. All right, so we're going to take the $5,000, we're going to take $4,800 of it, and we are going to pay off our credit card before any interest is due. And what that means is we have now floated, and that was the second principle, let me go back, floated $4,800 of expenses. We did not have our money sitting stale in checking. We had it earning interest in savings. We were not using our own money. We were using the bank's money, the $4,800 at 0% in order to leverage it. Okay, and now we've paid down our credit card. We still have $200 in checking. At this point, the software is looking at all of your finances, all of the bills that are coming up, what your income is, what's already happened, and it figures that right now is the best time to do what's called a funds transfer, or a strategic transfer. What it has done is calculating how much principal it wants to send to your debts. Um, and what it's gonna say, there we go, is it wants for you to move $3,789 out of savings and put it into your checking account. And it is then going to tell you to take that money 
all of it, $3,989 and initiate a funds transfer. Send that to your mortgage. What that is doing, uh, the additional money is really coming from a combination of interest accumulation, discretionary income, and interest cancellation. It is not coming from your budget. All right, the Worth account system calculated the exact amount of $3,789 to be transferred from savings to checking and then from checking over to your mortgage in this case. Um, the amount is gonna be different for every person. The time is different. You likely will never do the same funds transfer ever. The numbers are constantly changing because your numbers are constantly changing. Your expenses are never just gonna be 4,800, right? Everything in life is, or in, in terms of our budget is always variable. So everything is going to change each month and the system is gonna figure out how to make that work. So when we take the 3,989 out of checking, and we pay down that mortgage, that is the third money saving principle, which is called interest cancellation. So let's look a little bit more in depth at what that does, because sending that, that I'm gonna call it $4,000, sending that $4,000 over to the mortgage is huge. So let's look at interest cancellation, the third principle. Initially, John and Rebecca Jones started with a $200,000 loan balance. Now remember, they made, they made a mortgage payment, so it went down to $199,801, and then they sent another $4,000 over to principal. So their new balance is 195,812. Now remember, John and Rebecca Jones only have $200 a month of discretionary income. And we're only two months in. I showed you month one of a paycheck being deposited and then month two. So with, we have $400 combined of discretionary income, yet we've been able to take $4,000 and apply it towards the principal. Now, if you have $400 of discretionary income over a two-month period, I highly doubt you would ever send $4,000 to your mortgage, all right? The program is figuring out the mathematical way to leverage and float and cancel interest, and that's what's really important. So paying down that $4,000, what is the benefit? You still have the same 6% interest rate. You still have the same monthly payment. Nothing changes there. However, being two months in to a 360 month loan, you would think that we would still have 358 more months to pay on the loan. That's not the case. We're all the way down to 340 months. We just canceled 18 months worth of payments. It's 18 months you never have to pay from one transfer. Initially, we were gonna pay $231,677 of interest. Now we only pay 212,000 in interest. So that's a savings of almost $19,000. So on $400 of discretionary income over that two months, we sent $4,000 over to our mortgage and saved $19,000 in interest. And that's just the first transfer. Now funds transfers are going to happen um, every two to six months. They're gonna be different for everybody. And like I said, every single month, that number is going, the amount that you will transfer and where you transfer it to is going to be different because it's constantly figuring out what is in the best interest of you, uh, your best interest. So if we look, if they continue this over the life of their mortgage with a conventional program, they're gonna take 30 years to pay off their mortgage. With the worth account system, they're gonna be done in 15.6 years. Initially 250,000 basically of interest paid, now 125,000. So they've saved 122,000, if we round up, $122,000 of interest. That's huge. You know, what would you do with that extra money? You take vacation, retire, work less, um, invest it. And that's a big thing. Um, one of the things that we are very uh, big advocates for is helping you not just pay off debt, but build wealth and create wealth. And that's a whole nother PowerPoint um, that we can get into another time, but that's really, that's really important as well. All right. So what would you do with that extra money rather than giving it to the bank? Now, so far we've kind of kept it pretty basic. It's just been a mortgage, but it's not really very realistic. Most people here probably have more debts than just that. So let's look at this. And this kind of brings us into the fourth money saving principle. If we have a $200,000 mortgage. There's only really one order to pay that off. We pay the mortgage off first. If we have two debts, then there's two ways to pay it off. We could either pay the student loans off first and then pay off the mortgage, or we could pay off the mortgage and then pay off the student loans. So again, pretty simple, but not once we start racking up more. So if we have three debts, there's six different orders in which we can pay it off. Four debts, we go up to 24. Five debts, we go up to 120 different options. So which order would you choose to pay those debts off? Did you know that even if, even if two of them had the same interest rate, 
there will be one that is better than of the two to pay off first. Okay, so the fourth principle that the software utilizes is something called strategic payoff. It looks at the actual characteristics of each debt, looks at the amount owed, looks at the length of the debt, the interest rate. Um, it looks at calculation of the payment. How, how is that? Uh, is it a closed end loan? Is it an open end loan? Uh, is it a negative amortization loan? Um, it's going to look at adjusting interest rates. So it really um, it even has the ability to dynamically change based on when your interest rates may change. So let's say you have a variable rate and it changes, all right? It's going to figure that out as well. So it is looking at, at the most strategic time. So let's look at how that works in the same scenario that we looked at before. John and Rebecca Jones still make 5000 still 4800 of expenses, and still 200 a month of discretionary. But now they have a whole bunch more debt, and that's everything that was on the previous slide. I'm going to take a second just to pause and have a sip of water, uh, but also have you look at that and, and just think in your mind, uh, if those were your debts, which one do you think that you should pay off first? And take a look at that for a quick second, and let's see in a minute if you picked the right one. All right, so let's look at what's happening. Exact same as before, all of our loans are listed here by the red bar graphs. We have a $200,000 mortgage. We have the 10,700 is actually student loans. 20,000 in the auto loan and 8,000 on the credit card. So there's our debt. And just like before, John and Rebecca Jones get their paycheck first of the month, it gets deposited into their bank account, and immediately the software says, go ahead and move that over to savings and start earning interest. Take advantage of principle number one, interest accumulation. Go ahead and charge all of your monthly expenses or as much as you possibly can onto your credit card, car payment, house, gasoline, groceries, that's $4,800. Now, again, you'll see the same as before. The mortgage went from $200,000 to $199 because we had that $199 payment that went in from the first, uh, first payment towards principal. $5,000 is now $5,012. So everything's the exact same as what it, what was before in the previous situation. It's the beginning of month two. So John and Rebecca Jones get their paycheck of $5,000 deposited into their checking account. Now, when that happens, the software is going to say, okay, now I think this is the optimal time to do a transfer. And in this case, it's gonna say, go ahead and take $3,789 out of savings and move it over to checking. Now you'll notice it's not taking everything. Um, there's a, a strategic and optimal, there's a strategic number that it's transferring and an optimal time at which it's transferring. So there's a lot of different variables that go into this. When we put that $3,000 into our checking account, we now have 8,700. And the software says, okay, now it is, is time to go ahead and figure out exactly where to place that money, where it would best be used. And it's still accounting for the fact that John and Rebecca Jones have upcoming expenses. And it tells them in this case, all right, let's go ahead and pay off that $4,800 credit card because we don't wanna pay any interest on that credit card. And we're gonna pay that down to zero. And again, remember that's interest float. Secondly, it's gonna take $3,989 and pay down the auto loan. How many of you picked the auto loan? It was the lowest interest rate. So very seldom when we do these, you know, we sit with clients, do I ever have somebody pick the auto loan? But it is strategically the best one for them to, in their case to pay down with this combination of loans. Now, just as a side note, if you had a credit card that was a 0% interest rate, it may actually say, you know what, it's okay to have a $4,800 balance at a zero rate. Instead, we wanna take that 4,800 and the 3,900 and, and combine it completely and pay off the $8,000 credit card. The software is gonna look at what your individual situation is and figure out what's best for you, all right? Now, if you have one of those advanced lines of credit that we talked about, uh, a home equity line, a business line of credit, personal line of credit, um, you're going to be able to take advantage of interest float even more, okay? Which is why it also will pay off about six months to a year faster than if you don't. Again, you do not have to have it at all, but if you do, um, it just kind of puts some of those principles uh, into overdrive, those financial principles. All right, let's do this. Let's take a look at the actual software because you can look at bar graphs all you want, but I want to show you how um, how nice and simple the software is um, and how easy it is to look at. And you can see there, it just, it just uh, removed those balances. All right, so this is what the software looks like. It's a very easy dashboard. You can see at the top here, 9.2 years to pay off. That is gonna continue to go up or down depending on what happens in your financial situation. If you don't get a paycheck for a while, it's gonna go up. 
You start, as you start paying down debt, it's going to go down. Uh, if you spend less in your monthly budget, it's going to go down. Shows you the amount of interest that you have remaining, the total interest that you're going to save, and then what you've actually saved so far. Obviously, they still have nine years, so it's going to take them a little while to get to that $169,000 of savings. If you look here, uh, John gets a paycheck, and you can see it comes from John and goes to his checking account. That's a $1,300 paycheck. You'll see he pays expenses, pays his bills, pays the mortgage, pays the power. Rebecca, his wife, gets a paycheck, and she pays some bills. John gets another paycheck and pays some other bills. All right, so it's really just a, a check register of everything coming in and going out. But what's happening behind the scenes is a lot of mathematical formulas that is calculating and adjusting to everything that you're entering in and running it through a formula to figure out what the best thing is for you to do and when. And you'll see right here, anything with a red, uh, I call them squiggle lines, I don't know what they're officially called, <laughs> but anything with those red lines is where the software is saying, hey, pay attention. This is something different. This is not your normal deposit your income, pay your bills. This is me telling you to do something to help you get out of debt. And in this case, it's saying to take $896.59 and take it from checking and put it into savings. And that's kind of what we showed before on the, the bar graphs. You could see that it was moving money over to checking. In this case, it's saying that this is the most strategic amount. You'll, you'll notice it's not their whole paycheck, all right? And it's a different situation, um, different time. In the, maybe they have some quarterly bills coming up. Maybe they just made a transfer, whatever it may be. So it is figuring out what the optimal amount is to put over there. It's actually going to forecast out three months, so you'll be able to see everything that's coming up. Um, and it, it is able to look years and years and years into the future and figure out what is the fastest way to get you to zero. So with this software program, what it is doing is teaching you how to bank like a bank. It's going to compute the optimal time to leverage money, to pay off your debts, and to cancel interest. And I know it sounds simple, uh, but I told you at the beginning, they had to hire a um, mathematician, an engineer, I think it was a um, NASA en engineer, if I remember correctly. It's millions of lines of code and many different math algorithms uh, working 24 seven to try to figure out how to get you out of debt. Um, and banks know how to do this. They know how to leverage money. Um, and what we're trying to do is teach you how to bank like the bank, all right? What we actually call it, I think probably the best analogy I've ever heard, is that the worth account is like your financial GPS. Just like a GPS, it is going to constantly calibrate what you, what you need to do, every single aspect of your financial situation, okay? So in terms of income, it's gonna look at, do you have multiple streams of income? Do you get paid weekly or bi-weekly or monthly? Are some months better than others? Are you commission-based? Are things irregular? If you're commission-based, then we probably need to wait till after you get your paycheck, if you get your paycheck, before we do anything. So the software is very intelligent, and what I, I use the word agile. It moves, it's limber, it, it looks at what's happening and figures out how to adjust. Looks at the amount owed and the term that you have on each debt. Uh, looks at Minimum monthly payments, it figures out when those are calculated, how they're calculated, when they're due. It looks up all this information. Um, it's gonna look at what's coming down the road. Do you have quarterly bills? Uh, my water bill's quarterly. It knows that that's coming up. Uh, tax time, knows that that's coming up. Uh, if I you know, have a vacation, it's gonna know everything that you input in there, it is going to be able to keep track and process and we'll make sure that it factors that in. It's constantly calculating the mathematical fastest way to zero and every time, you change, it changes. It runs it back through the system again. So again, if we look at it like a financial GPS, it's essentially guiding you. I'm just gonna put these up, there we go. It's essentially guiding you, right? So it says, okay, the fastest way today from here to zero is this. And then you get off track because you overspend one month. And it says, okay, let's recalculate. How do we get to zero now? And then you add a car loan in and it says, okay, we didn't have a car loan before. How do we mathematically get you back to zero, get you back on track? Any turns that you make, um, you may make shortcuts. They may be, you know, take you the long route, but it's going to constantly figure with whatever you do, how do I get them back to zero? All right. At any point, you're able to check and see how far you've gone, how far you have left, what your stats have been all the way along the way. So it tracks everything. Um, and then additionally, once, like I said, once we're, um, paying off the debts, we also want to make sure that we're building wealth. What does it not do? Because I think that this is important. We do not move any of your money. 
The Worth account does not move money, does not pay bills. We don't need any of your account numbers at all. Nobody ever has access to your money, all right? It is in full control. Your mortgage stays where it is, your car loan stays where it is, your student loans stay where they are, your checking and savings accounts stay where they are at the bank, and you continue to pay all of your own bills. What this does is simply functions as an account register. You tell it what money is coming in and what money is going out, and it will then figure out what to do. It's gonna track and maintain your monthly budget, and it only takes about 10 minutes a month or so to update, so it's pretty quick. Now, I'll just kind of summarize. It helps you to eliminate all debt in as little as five to seven years. It's huge. It will help you make educated decisions. And let's, let's give you an example of that. So one of my friends purchased this, this program last week. She only had $50,000 only, $50,000 of student loans. Sometimes student loans are as big as mortgages. She had $50,000 of student loans and she had about $700 owed on a credit card, right? And she had 15 years left to pay that $50,000 of student loans off. We ran her numbers and in, from 15 years, it was gonna have it paid in 2.1 years. And she was thrilled, I was thrilled for her. Um, I know what a burden the student loans have been for her over the years. She's been living in a place that doesn't have air conditioning. She uses a window unit. She uses a space heater for heat um, because her student loans don't allow her to live where she really wants to live. Uh, and so she was thrilled. So we got her on the program. And then immediately, within a, it's been less than a week, she called me and she said, hey, my, my lease is up and I have to decide if I'm going to renew my lease here or not for another 12 months. Now, I'm in Washington, D.C., so one bedroom apartment, $2,000, all right? It's not cheap to live here. So she said, what if I spend an extra $100 or $200 a month? You know, that's 5 or 10% more of her rent payment. What would, what would that do? Would that... Am I able to do that? What is, how does that affect my numbers? And so we, I said, well, let's type it in. Let's see. It helps you to make educated decisions. So we typed in the hypothetical and, you know, and then shows, hey, it's going to take you from 2.1 to 2.9. Is it worth it to have heat and air conditioning? My mind, yes. In her mind, no. She, she decided she didn't want to do that. She said, nope, I, I got to get rid of these student loans. I, I just, I'm going to focus completely on these. I'll stay here for another year. Signed her, signed her lease to stay there another year. So that's the type of power that it has in, in determining and helping you to make an educated decision. What I do today, how does that impact me in the future? All right. And sometimes you'll, you'll be so pleased that it doesn't even matter. Um, there may be times where you don't get a commission check and you're fine. Your number doesn't change at all. And there'll be other times where it does make an impact. Um, and that's, it's really great to be able to see. It's also going to help you to improve your credit score. Um, as you are starting to pay down your debt, your debt to income ratio improves, helps you then to be able to get lower interest rates or to get more credit extended to you if you want to buy multiple properties or, or something like that in order to build wealth. So that's a big one for a lot of people. And this is not any sort of a, a credit repair program. It's just naturally what happens as you start paying off debt. The software is yours for life. You take it from house to house, or if you don't have a house, take it from one car loan to another car loan. Um, they're not additional fees, it's, it's yours for life, you keep it forever. Now, there are no mandatory fees, contracts, or surprises. Now, it says mandatory fees, what is that? Uh, we do have an option if you want to put things on autopilot and not have to do a 10 minute a month update, you can put it on autopilot. And there is a little bit of an, a small additional monthly fee for that. Now. In that case, I made a joke to somebody earlier that if you've got the, the software, which is your GPS, and the additional add-on, which is your autopilot, you're essentially riding in a Tesla. <laughs> you're just sitting back and everything's happening for you. The software is telling you exactly how to get to zero. It is updating everything for you, and everything is just on autopilot, um, which is a great place to be, and, and that is an, an available option, but not mandatory. You do have lifetime customer support, coaching, and education, and let's talk about that. Um, when you get on the software, you will have the option to have a, a one-hour coaching session with someone from the home office, and they will teach you how to use the program. They'll make sure all your numbers are correct. They'll teach you how to use it. Um, they'll answer all of your questions. And then at any time, if you have questions, you're able to just call them um, and you get through to a, to a human here in the United States. You will be able to have, um, have support, which is great. Um, and they're really, really good about that. So here's what I would recommend for anybody that is on the line. Um, 
look, the program works, okay? There are tens of thousands of clients that have been using this for over 15 years. There are many that are already completely debt free. We have an A plus rating with the Better Business Bureau. We've gotten all sorts of awards and accolades and been featured in magazines. We offer a guarantee that if you're, the numbers you give us are correct, it will work, okay? The program works. So what I would recommend is whoever invited you here, I would say get back with them and let them run your analysis. It is free to run. Um, it only takes a couple of minutes and it's gonna tell you the exact month and year that you're gonna be completely debt free, all right? So look, you have to pay back the principal you borrowed, but you determine how much interest you pay. So I would encourage you, get with the person that invited you, get your numbers run, and you'll be able to see the exact month and year that you're gonna be debt free, and that's when it makes it personal.